Did you know that most advertisers charge back quality leads just because they can? And most of us publishers, we're partners with an ad network that isn't doing anything about it. Hey everyone, I'm Jeff Williams with OnlineMediaBroker.com. And like most publishers, I've been in contact with the dark side of the industry. And uh, no, I'm not talking about sexy Russians who want to get married to hairy like animal at American men. You are hairy like animal. No, nothing like that. Make love to me, monkey man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm talking about chargebacks on quality leads and just the nastiness that's going on around all that. We're talking about the issue with the CPA industry. Here's the scenario. So you have company X. They want to attract and acquire new customers. So they partner with an ad network to help create an offer. Oftentimes, the ad networks, they won't do that great of a job. They'll do a poor job at monetizing the offer. And it costs the company more money than what it's worth to acquire the new clients. I'm not saying that every ad network does this. It's just that I'm finding that there are a lot that just don't seem to care all that much the deeper I look. So here's an example, right? The cost is $2.3 million and the projected profit is 3.1 million. They actually come back with 2.6. So they create a chargeback of 300,000 to make up some difference there. Now let's take a little deeper look here. There's about four scenarios. Now today we're only gonna be talking about three. The fourth one is very complex, very deep, and actually very dark. So that's gonna be on the next video. The first scenario is they've made a profit, but they missed their goal or Maybe they broke even, they are neutral, so they want to make up some money, right? So they create a chargeback. The third one is they don't make any money, it's all loss. So they make up for it by creating more chargebacks on a, on a lead, so that way their loss isn't so big. Now the fourth, like I said, is the darkest. It's one that I've been taking a look into, and it seems that there's no one checking the company to make sure that those leads are actually good. I mean, they're quality leads that go to the company, but then the company just decides they're not gonna report them. The real question is this, was all this legal? Absolutely not. So this is my next video, like I said, I'll get into it a little bit deeper next time, but we're gonna keep on with those first three ideas. We're talking about companies, advertisers, right? If one customer costs $200 to acquire and doesn't generate an ROI of 200 or more within two weeks, then they're considered a bad lead. But that's crazy because two weeks is arbitrary, right? I mean, as publishers, we know ROI in two weeks is ridiculous. So, I mean, I mean, sure, sure, like it can happen, but it's unreasonable for a company to say a legit lead that wants to get a loan or a gadget or whatever the offer is, become a subscriber to a sign up, or if they want it, then they're gonna get it. But maybe they don't buy it right away. They don't generate that ROI within two weeks. I mean, some people just take time, right? Maybe they need you know, uh, more impressions of the company or something, right? Maybe someone in the company uh, mishandled a client. Maybe the website was down. I mean, there's tons of things that could go on. I mean, you have a bad client experience, whatever it is, who knows? The point is that the weight of verifying fraud is on the companies and not on the publishers. My point is, is this. The weight is on the company verifying fraudulent leads, not on the publisher proving that their leads are valid. Publishers should make great content, experiences, whatever, for that offer, and then companies should pay for the traffic or the leads that they get, unless they can verify that it's fraud in, in a reasonable time, too. And I think 24 or 48 hours is, is more than enough. And then ad networks should be regulating this, you know, making sure that us publishers are sending good leads. And then the companies who complain, they have to prove that they're fraudulent in a timely manner so no one's getting shafted. I mean, that's just, to me, that just makes sense, right? I know this is an ideal situation and, and honestly, it sounds too good to be true, but what kind of ad network's going to bat for publishers like this? What kind of ad network is challenging companies to prove fraud? and take them to court if they still wanna be a dick about it. What kind of ad network is monetizing and making custom tailored offers for companies in such a way that prevents 
bullshit chargebacks. Now, what ad network's dealing with all this trouble and still paying their publishers on time? I mean, what ad network is simply doing the right thing and deals with all the crap and don't care? Online Media Broker is the only one looking for ad networks like that. And we're the only ones that can certify such ad networks. And I know what you're thinking, like certify what? But listen, we think that if an ad network can deal with crap like that and challenge big companies and back up us publishers, then they deserve to be certified. They should be, you know, known for being an awesome company who's gonna back us anytime that there's some crap going on, right? So we find that it's fitting to certify these uh, ad networks after an animal who's also just as badass, right? So we call it the Honey Badger certification. I know it's a little corny, but Honey Badger don't care, right? And that's the kind of ad network I want. You know what I'm saying? So today's the day I've made my first certification on a couple of ad networks. So if you wanna know who they are and start a relationship with them, they'll get your back, whatever it is. They'll always pay on time. Then click the link in the description. I've got it there for you. Any of you publishers, get on that. I'd love to share them with you. And here's the thing, within 24 hours, I'll send you an email with the best fit for your needs. So it's not just any ad network, it's the ones that's really gonna fit your niche or whatever your vertical may be. So I wanna thank everyone, really, like keep sending your stories, publishers, you know, guys, we, we, need, we need to hear this from one another. So the best friend of a publisher is another publisher who's gotten burned. So I love to hear your stories. I love to be a voice for you guys. Tell me which ones you think are good and tell me which ones you think need to get, you know, the light shined on them and, you know, see what's really going on there. I'll take it. I'll take the next step. I'll investigate. Let me know who you want me to investigate next. If you have your own story, cool. There's a link for you as well. Just tell your story. Maybe we'll have you on the podcast. Love to do that. Now, if you want to be a certified badass Honey Badger ad network, link's in the description too. Get it. Now, we're asking publishers to share their biggest loss story. Now, I get that doesn't sound great, but you guys, you've been hit, and I've heard some crazy stuff. Now, the publishers, if you've got like the craziest loss, we have something special for you. Hopefully it help ease the pain. So send in your craziest stories. Love to be able to share those because we all know that this is going on and we need to keep sharing it so that way a movement gets going on. Please check out the links, share the video, subscribe. Would love to get a thumbs up. That helps so much if you could just thumbs up this video and really subscribe because I got that other video coming about the deepest, darkest, gnarliest thing going on about how these companies are just keeping your money. Bottom line, that's what it looks like. I mean, that's all I'm saying. Anyways, I'll talk to you guys again. Once again, I'm Jeff Williams with OnlineMediaBroker.com. Please like and please subscribe to this video. We got the podcast coming, so we're coming. We're coming.